Hello, and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. My name is Susan, and this channel is Road Reads, and we're here today for a quick weekly bookish check-in. I have one book I definitely want to talk with you about. I finished this, I think, last week, and it was... It was five stars. That's Michael Cunningham's The Hours. Just in case you're curious, I did not read it in this little tiny adorable edition. I did read it on my Kindle. This book, so I first read it when it came out. It came out in 1998. It won the Pulitzer Prize in 1999. And I remember loving the book, but it, that was a long time ago. So I wanted to reread it. I wanted to reread Mrs. Dalloway this month too. And those books are very connected. This this is three women's stories three women from different lifestyles different time periods different locations and it's basically a day in the life one of those characters is the very real life virginia wolf and then we have his two fictional characters we have clarissa who is living in new york city it's the 1990s and she is she is the modern Mrs. Dalloway character for Michael Cunningham. And then we also have Laura, and she's out in California. It's post-World War II, so mid to uh, late 1940s. She's a housewife and a mother of one with another on the way. Like I said, we're following these three women, three women a day in their life. If you love beautifully written books, the pros in this will not let you down. I love how Michael Cunningham wrote in this book. I haven't read any of his others, but I can only speak to the hours. Like I said, it won the 1999 Pulitzer Prize. I completely see why. This is a short novel, short, but it packs a punch. And that, I I like that. I, I like a shorter work that packs a punch. I love short stories that do that. I love shorter no novels like Ethan Fromm and Giovanni's Room. The hours can, it can slide right in there as a sliver of a book that is really gonna get to you. Uh, I wouldn't say this is miserable to go along with my miserable may read along, <laughs> but it is sad but it's also thought provoking. There's hope in here too. There's hopeful feelings. Uh, there's a lot of questions, like societal questions brought up and he's not there to answer it all, but just to kind of teeter totter with this, to dance with these questions and get you thinking. And I, I just, I was just all in for this book. I did, I did not like the way it began because it begins with the real life suicide of Virginia Woolf. I didn't understand why that needed to be at the in the book at all, much less to start it. It felt like it was taking advantage of that. Uh, I, I didn't, I just didn't think it was necessary. But I did watch some interviews with Michael Cunningham on YouTube. And he said, the fact that she ended her life is not the story of her life, which of course, I agree with, I completely agree. I, I, I mean, doesn't that wouldn't that count for everyone, I, I feel. Uh, but he he wanted it in the book. I think originally it was going to be at the end. And he decided, no, we'll put it at the beginning. We'll get it behind us. And then we'll move on. So that is how he was thinking of it. And he's the author, so he gets to decide. Anyway, powerfully written. Beautiful stories of these beautiful examinations of this little slice of life in each of these women's lives. I recommend this to anyone who enjoys literary fiction. If you are a fan of Virginia Woolf, definitely read this. And uh, like I said uh, in another video, my plan is to reread Mrs. Dalloway this month too. So this is going to pair so nicely to read The Hours, which was the original working title of Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway to uh, to read these so close together. So uh, that is the book I've finished since we last spoke. But basically since then, I have just been reading in my Adams Jefferson letters and also the group read for Miserable May. I've been reading Jude the Obscure. I woke up really early this morning, as in 4 a.m., and I read till about 6.30, so I only have about 25% of the book left. And I won't talk about it today. I want to get to the end and process my thoughts on that before I come to them with you. Just know that I have, I have been reading it ahead of schedule. There is a 
you know, a loose if you want to follow reading schedule for the official official Miserable May read, a, read along. But I just, I have trouble pacing myself with read alongs because if I'm really into, you know, this world an author is created, in this case, Thomas Hardy with Jude the Obscure, and I am, I'm in the, that world, it's hard for me to leave it for another work of fiction. Like, it's not hard for me to read the Adam Jefferson letters <laughs> um, while reading Jude the Obscure, but I couldn't go, like, pick up, you know, I don't want to like pick up Mrs. Dalloway in the meantime. So anyway, speaking of Jude the Obscure, I've been reading it on my Kindle and I, I wanted to get a hard copy so I can make all the all the annotations that I've been making in the Kindle. I want to put it into a hard copy and have it on my shelf. So I went to my favorite bookstore, my favorite local bookstore, Joseph Beth here in Cincinnati, and I had a $10 off coupon. So I was eager to use that. And they did not have the Ju they did not have Jude the Obscure on their shelf. They had three copies of Tess, but no Jude the Obscure. And so I I took the next logical step and used that ten dollar coupon on Emily Henry's The Happy Place. I go in for Jude the Obscure and I come out with Happy Place by Emily Henry. But one, they had it already thirty percent off because. Uh, Joseph Beth will uh, often do that. The members, and I'm a, uh, a member there, uh, get 30% off of some of their new releases. And I just felt it was appropriate because it's an autographed copy from um, the author's local bookstore because she is a Cincinnati area, Northern Kentucky girl, just like me. And so I thought, you know what? So what if it's not Thomas Hardy? <laughs> Go ahead and get Happy Place from the author's local bookstore and yours. So I did. Like, it almost felt free between the 30% off and the $10 coupon. So who knows? Maybe when I'm done with Jude the Obscure, I will. I might go into Happy Place just for a little palate cleanser before starting either Mrs. Dalloway or Bring Up the Bodies. I don't know, I'm kind of leaning toward Mrs. Dalloway just to have that reading, you know, very close to when I read the hours. But uh, TV wise, I have been watching, I should say TV slash book wise, I have been watching The Last Thing He Told Me on Apple TV Plus and really enjoying that. So if you if you read the Laura Dave book a few years ago and you have Apple TV Plus, definitely give that give that a look. It's, uh, it releases new episodes on Friday. And I think we have, at le I think we have one episode left. So maybe this Friday will be the conclusion. So I'm eager to watch that and see how that's going. But that's, yeah, this is a really quick video because, uh, that's pretty much all I've been reading. I do have a drive tomorrow. I'm going to head to Tennessee so I need to get an audiobook queued up because I'm sure tonight I will finish June. So I just have to decide. I, I'll probably do a Perot, uh, a Hugh Fraser narration of a Perot book for my drive to Tennessee because usually those Perot books are about the same length as my drive, which just works out perfectly. And yeah, I'll keep you posted on what route I go. Like if I go the um, lighter route <laughs> or if I he head into Mrs. Uh, Dalloway's world or into Mantell land. Uh, I, I mean, I can't, I feel like I can't go wrong. I know this is going to be more difficult to read just because me and the modernist writing and I love Mantell's writing. Like I dig, I read Wolf Hall and just thought, wow. She knows what she's doing. She really, she's amazing. So yeah, let me know in the comments how your reading is going this month. Have you read Happy Place by Emily Henry yet? I'm curious. And if you're in the Jude the Obscure read along, let me know in the comments. It's so hard for me not to talk about Jude so far in this video because I'm, you know, I'm 75% the way through the book, but I will show strength of character and keep my mouth shut until I am finished and can properly process my thoughts. So we'll leave it here today. If this is your kind of video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.